Parshas Korach begins, Vayikach Korach, Vedatam Ve'abiram Ve'akumu Lifnei Moshe. Bekitzer. Rashi points out, it says Korach took, Vayikach, but it doesn't say what he took. It just says Vayikach, and then Datam Ve'aviram as well took, Vayakumu Lifnei Moshe, and they stood before Moshe. So what is it that they took? So Rashi says, Lakachet Atzmo Letzad Acher, or Letzad Achad, to be Cholek on the Kahuna. And this is based on the Unklus. The Unklus is Metargim, his parish is Ve'it Peleg. He was a Mefarish, he separated himself from the Klal. He separated himself from Am Yisrael, he separated himself to a different side, to his own side. What did he separate from, where did he separate to, other than Tzad Acher? So, I'll give three approaches, they're all really the same approach. The overall idea, the overall theme, which is quite apparent, is, is that it, it was leaving the Klal Yisrael, it was leaving the Achdus, the sense of unity that Klal Yisrael could have had, and did have, leading up really to the Chet of the Meraglim, and Kivar Tava. The Mishnah Perkei Avos says, Kol shemaim Any machlokas, any debate, any argument that is l'shem shemaim is just to get to the truth. Like, says the Gemara, says the Mishnah, like the Machlokes, like the arguments of Hillel and Shammai, Sofalit Gaim, it's never going to be erased from this world. We're going to remember it's going to live on eternally. And the reverse, Machlokes, that's not Shem Shemaim, is not Sofalit Gaim. And what does the Mishnah say? For example, the Machlokes of Korach, the Kol Adato, the Machlokes of Korach and his posse. Now, though Noam Ali Melch points out, it should have said, just like the Mishnah started off, like Hillel and Shammai, the two sides, and here it just says Korach v'chol adato, Korach and his side, the 250 men in Dada Naviram. What about Moshe? It should have said Korach v'chol adato im Moshe. Why isn't Moshe mentioned? So the Noam Elif Melech explains that not only did, did Korach separate himself from Moshe, not only did he have a beef with Moshe, but he was actually really separated completely entirely from those he was colluding with against Moshe. For example, the Pachar Yitzchak of Rav Hutner, he explains that the Torah mentions ki echad when it comes to Am Yisrael Har Sinai, it was our pinnacle of Achdus, that we were like one man b'levechad, ki echad b'levechad. We, we understood that we all served a different part, we were a different aver, we were a different body part, and at Har Sinai we were all the lev. By Mitzrayim, by the Mitzrayim, and Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, when the Mitzrayim chased after Yisrael, it says, Belevechad ki ishechad, or reverses it with, with the same heart, and it was just that same idea. They had one mission in mind, and that mission made them ishechad, but in general they weren't an ishechad. The Noam Ali Melch explains this is the exact same thing that's going on here. Korach was completely separate. He was levechad with his Ada, but really they were not an ishechad. Even within there, it was, it was a machlokis within. They couldn't care less who would have gotten the gadula other than themselves, they only wanted for themselves. The true mark of those who have a machlokas l'shem shemaim explains the Noam Ali Malach, are those who, who just disagree, but everything else is, is peaches. When, when your, your Baal Plogta has an aliyah, you're happy for him, you're not jealous. That's not the case by Korach and his Eidah. He was completely removed, he was completely one individual. Which brings me to the second point. What, is, what does Korach say? His taina is, Rav lachem, ki kol ha'ida kulam kedoshim ibutocham Hashem. Why do you get the kahuna? Everyone could be a Kohen Gadol. Everyone should go in to the lifnei velifnim, into the Kodesh Kadashim, and bring the korbanos and get close to Hashem and be a Kohen. His taina was, we have 613 mitzvahs. And not one person in this world is able to fulfill all 613. If I'm not a Kohen, I can't do the mitzvahs of a Kohen. If I don't have a brother, I can't do Yibu. Etc. Etc. I want to do more mitzvos. That's what Korach wanted. He wanted to do more mitzvos. The Biala Rebbe explains. We have, we know, we say this all the time. We have Ramach. We have we have two hundred and forty eight mitzvos to say, and Shisa three hundred and sixty five mitzvos lo say, like the limbs and the the gidin and the evarim in our body. And the way that we complete, we fulfill all Tariyag mitzvos is that we all, as a Klal, as Klal Yisrael, are Balevachad ki Ishechad, sorry, ki Ishechad Balevachad. As a Klal, when we have an Achdus, so then, yes, 
my leg or another part of the klal can perform a mitzvah that the eyes can't see. The eyes can't be jealous of the leg because the leg can kick the ball. That's not the eye's function. There's no greater than or lesser than. There are just different roles that everybody in Kal Yisrael plays together. And Korach said, no, no, no. I, he didn't understand that. He felt that the Kohanim were, were for some reason on a greater stature. No. It, it, it's that your neshama is built for a specific tafkit, a specific purpose, and, and this isn't your purpose. Being a Kohen isn't your purpose. This explains the, the, the Gemara Nadarim. The Gemara Nadarim says that uh, the, the sun and the moon, when, when this machlokas of Korach was going on, the sun and the moon came before God and they said, God, if you don't come in and interfere and judge on behalf of Moshe and get involved, we're not going to light ourselves up. In anu, anu mi'irim. We're not going to light ourselves up. Why are the sun and the moon getting involved? So why specifically the sun and the moon? So the Gemara in Chulin explains, or the Gemara in Chulin will, will help shed light, uh, pun not intended, on the matter. We know that Akrash Baruch Hu says really contradictory phrases in Bracious, in, in, in the creation of the world. That it says Akrash Baruch Hu wanted to create Hamiorot Hagdolim, the two big illuminators, the sun and the moon. But when he actually created them, it was one great and one small, Hamor HaKatan. So the Midrash explains that really when God created the sun and the moon, they were of equal proportion, of equal size. And the moon came before God. They said, listen, we serve different functions. One of us, there's not two malachim. There can't be two kings. We, we serve two functions. We can't look the same. So God said, you know, Taka, you're right. And he, he reduced the size of the moon. And the moon says, hey, hey, I made a good point, and you're going to make me smaller? And God says, no, no, you're not being made smaller. The tzaddikim will be called small. Shmuel akatan, David akatan, Moshe akatan. That was his consolation. What Hashem was telling, in effect, to the moon was, yeah, you're right. Each person serves a different purpose, and the tzaddikim are going to be called katana because it's not, a, it's not relative to stature. It's relative to your mission, your task, your tafkid, your role. And so the sun and the moon, they come before, before God, and they say, if Korach's right, then, then I'm not getting involved. Then, then put me back to my size, because if it is about stature, then I don't want to be small anymore. And the sun got involved, too. He says, I don't want to see my little friend, the moon, be so embarrassed. No, put it back the way it was. Kashmir, you have to get involved because it's not about stature. It's about different roles. Moshe also had this, this, uh, this issue, the same issue that Korach does later on. He, he asked to go into Eretz Yisrael, and the Gemara in Sato says, Berav biser, berav bisru. He says, Rav lachem, b'nei levi, you've stepped too far, and God says the same thing, thing to Moshe. Moshe wanted to go into Eretz Yisrael, why? Not to eat the fruit, says the Gemara. He wanted to be Mekhaim the mitzvot that he couldn't outside of Eretz Yisrael. And Kaddish Baruch Hu said, no, this isn't your role. Rav lecha, Rav lecha. It's be happy with your role. This is your tafkid. You are not meant to go into Eretz Yisrael. And at the end, the children of Korach, they finally understood. After they've done tshuva, they say in Tehillim, the Tehillim written by B'nai Korach, by the three sons of Korach, who, who got out of, of, of the pit of the earth, of, of the Sheol, and, and, they, and they were, they were choser b'tshuva. So they say in Tehillim, "Diminu elokim chastecha beker of hechalecha, keshim elokim kainti latecha al katzvei aretz." So Rav Shner Kotler explains, "Diminu elokim chastecha beker of hechalecha." We thought we can only get close to you beker of hechalecha by going in, by being kohanim. But now we understand, "Keshim elokim kainti latecha al katzvei aretz." I understand that I can come close to you anywhere, however my tafkid is. Now we can understand the Gemara Shabbos. Famous Gemara, where there's a ger, or a wannabe ger. He comes before Shammai, he says, kula kshani omed al regalachat. Right? I want to be Megayar, but first he teach me kol tor kula al regalachas, on one leg. Shammai pushes away, and Hillel says, okay, right? Madasani alecha, al tasalecha varecha. The alecha sani lecha varech lo ta'avit. Ve'idach pirusha. And the rest is just commentary. What you don't like done to yourself, don't do unto others. So Sefer Bet Shmuel Achron explains what what was this gear? What, what was his what was his goal? So going back to what we said before, the Biala Rebbe explained that we have we have a chiv to do all six hundred thirteen mitzvot, and we, we we physically spiritually can't. We are not made for all those roles. So Hakadosh Baruch Hu gives us a Gilgal, 
we come back into the world a second and maybe a third time until we check off all those boxes until we've done all 613 mitzvahs. So what, what the Ger said was, was I want to do kola Torah kula al regel achad. Regel is like shalosh regalim, it's a time. I want to do it just one time. I don't want to come back to the world and over, over and over again. So what did Hillel say? Right? Madasani alecha al tasalecha barecha. Rashi says, v'yahavt l'recha kamocha. When you have achdus with your friends, when you have ishechad, and each person is playing his role, sitting in rekhaim mitzvah, the mitzvahs, the target mitzvahs, kol tor kula in one shot. And Korach didn't understand that. Again, he, he separated himself from the cloud. The final interpretation I'm going to bring for you is from Rosolvechik. Rosolvechik said, by the way, just going back, that's why specifically when, when Moshe comes up with, with his reaction to Korach and he says, everybody bring Ketores, what was he telling Korach? Well, Ketores is, is the Chibor, is the connection of Am Yisrael in the, nish, in the Nishmasi level, like the Balatanya says that at our core, we are all one in our nisha, Nishama level. On the Guth level, we're all Mechulak. We're all, we're all separated into individuals. But on the nish, Nishama level, on the soul level, we are all connected as one. We all plug into that same unit. The Mar Bracho says, Hanishama nehenes ve'inaguf nehenem mireach. The Nishama gets, and only the Nishama gets its pleasure Get some benefit, some hana, from reach, from the smell of the Torahs. Moshe was saying, "Look, go back to your essence. We need to be together." Like we know, echad amarbe, the echad amami, bilvat sheichav and libel b'shemayim. At the end of the day, we all play our roles. But the Rav Soloveitchik, he says, really, what what Korach was coming to do is saying, we don't need rebbeim, I don't need a rebbe. Rashi explains, Rashi brings down the two Midrashim that Korach asked Moshe, he says, if tzitzis are completely made of tzcheles, do the tzitziot, the strings themselves, need to be of tzcheles, and, and are they putter? And, and Moshe said, no, they're not putter. The tzitzis need tzcheles, regardless of whether or not they're tzcheles. Then he brings the second question, he says, if a house is full of sfarim, it's just a, just a warehouse of sfarim, does it need a mezuzah? And, and Moshe says, yes. He says, I don't understand. You have, you have 265, you have 265, 75 parshios in the whole Torah, and, and I need one parsha on, on my doorpost? It doesn't make sense. He's laughing at Moshe. So if Soloveitchik says what he was taught, what he was referring to was the Manhigim and the Rabbanim, based on these, on these two questions that the Midrash brings down, the mezuzah and the tzitzis. The, the Maharal explains that by, by tzitzis, we know that tzitzis are connected maise, action which was Aaron, Aaron who brought the Korbanos before God. We don't need Aaron. And, and Moshe was the, was the Talmud, the one who, who hears from Hashem. The mezuzah. In essence, what Korach was saying, we don't need Rebbeim. We are all Kulam Kedoshim. We all heard Anochi from Hashem. We all heard Anochi Hashem Elkech. We are all, at that point, we're Rebbeim. We've been raised. Thank you, Moshe. You brought us to this point, but we don't need you anymore. Or Soloveitchik says, he says that there's a Gemara that says, Talmid al yore ela in ke no tel roshos mirabo. Uh, the Talmud should not give a psak, should not, should not rule in front of his rabbi unless he gets permission from his rabbi. So one of his Talmudim once asked him, he says, well, if you don't have a rabbi, then you can give psak. And Soloveitchik dismissed it completely. He said, if you don't have a rabbi, you don't have the authority to give psak. No, you don't know how to learn. But Ermai Mechaim explains the role of the tzaddikim. The role of the tzaddikim are they are the tzinor, they are the faucet connected to the to the to the, to the Be'er Ma'im Chaim, to to the essence of, of the of the water, and they're the ones who bring the water into the well and the well to the to the fields using the whole irrigation system. So when the well fills up, you just you get rid of the tzinor, you get rid of the faucet. If you do that, then the water stands alone, and it goes bad a little bit. But if it's still connected to the source, then it can filter in and out and in and out, stay fresh. That's what a tzaddik does. A tzaddik always keeps you grounded, always keeps you connected to that source, always keeps you growing. The tzaddik is, is referred to as a malach. We're supposed to look at, the, at, at a rebbe as, like a, as an angel. The idea being that angels, they don't move, they, they're stationary, they don't grow. When your rebbe is your rebbe, the tor rebbe, when, when you're his talmud, he's only thinking about your growth, not his growth. Somebody who's looking out for you, helping you grow. Korach completely removed himself from the clock, completely removed himself from Achtus. He thought it was a stature thing. He didn't want, he didn't understand 
that to complete the Targ Mitzvah, he didn't need to be a Kohen. It wasn't because he was lesser. It's because it wasn't what he was put on this earth for. And all he needed to do was connect and, and create, a, in essence, a sense of achdus and recognize those who can help him get to higher levels. But he wanted to go in alone. And as, as much as perfectionists as, as I can be, as others can be, we can't do it alone. As much as sometimes in work we'll, we'll feel, you know, like, I'd rather do it myself. But we know sometimes delegating or, or working as a team can get things done far quicker and far more effective and will grow much quicker. Here some of the that we should learn how to work together, stick up for each other, stay the cloud, respect the cloud, appreciate it, and grow all together. Chavez.